If one of our Shia goes for Imam Hussein's visitation, then he will not return, but all his sins will be forgiven. For every step that he takes, 1,000 virtues are written for him, 1,000 sins are forgiven, and his status is elevated by 1,000 degrees. Imam Jafar Sadiq. Every year, 40 days after the 10th of Muharram, visitors from all over the globe flock to Karbala to pay their respects as well as pledge their allegiances to Imam Hussein, the grandson of the last messenger of Allah. For 30 years, the dictator Saddam forbid the public Arbayin visitation, though since his fall, the long-time tradition of walking to Karbala has re-emerged into the limelight as an 80-kilometer road has been stretched out from Imam Ali's shrine in Najaf to Imam Hussein's shrine in Karbala. A key scientific component of walking is the increased activity of the human brain. This is why many philosophers walk rather than sit as they ponder on ideas and the world. Due to the enhanced stimulation and creativity that it brings out, it has been a catalyst that led to many an epiphany and teaches one to be constantly in the present. If we are then to reflect on our lives during a walk that begins with Imam Ali, who is referred to by Prophet Muhammad as being the door to the city of knowledge and are on our way to end the journey with reaching his son and martyr Imam Hussein, who is a human symbol for the noble qualities of man then the quality of reflection during this walk will rise above that on any other walk, spiritually transcending the walker into acquiring a whole new world view as he combines his thoughts with the lives of the two Imams he is walking from and to. The benefit of such a walk is not just evident scientifically, but also religiously. In the Quran, Allah says, Allah intends only to remove from you the impurity of sin. O people of the Prophet's household, and to purify you with extensive purification, as the Quran testifies to the purity of the Ahlubayt, of the household, in walking to them and attaching oneself to them, one is also purifying his own heart metaphysically. The secrets of the unseen world are exposed during the visit of Imam Hussein, as the angels guard the visitors on their journey of self-purification. The sixth Imam, Jafar Sadiq, states that when the visitor leaves the house for Ziyara, each and every spot that he steps on prays for him. The walk from Najaf to Karbala is 80 kilometers long and so every single step on that 80 kilometer walk is touching a piece of the earth that is praying for the visitor of Imam Hussein. When one takes part in this walk, they will notice the various types of people accompanying them on the journey. Young children accompany their parents whilst an open buggy is pushed to their side. Groups of young boys walk together in brotherhood in one of their first experiences of independence. Seventy-year-olds will walk with canes and sticks to support their aching legs. Disabled men and women on wheelchairs refuse to be pushed, rather they insist on wheeling themselves for 80 kilometers. One-legged visitors hop. Black, white, brown and Asian people walk together in unison uniting under the banner of humanity. Residents from all over Iraq set forth from their home towns weeks prior to Arbayin, walking for hundreds of kilometers, 
My name is Maysam Kimji from Kenya. I work as a blacksmith. For my love for Imam Hussein and to pledge to him that I'm with him. And uh, I'm, I'm answering to the call of Halmin Nasiri on Suruna. And uh, I'll do this every day of my life if I could. At work I got jacked, hijacked at work with uh, gangsters, young people who are probably struggling in this world to survive and who have no religion basically. So what had happened was that they came one day at work and uh, they wanted to rob me. And in the process of doing that, um, they apparently let out a couple of bullets on me. Uh, because of a panic situation uh, which unfortunately hit me in a place which was very critical but the moment I got hit and I I just called out to Imam Zamana and Ya Ali and uh, after 45 minutes got to the hospital and still made it alive and Alhamdulillah nothing 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 really missed me because nothing really happened in the sense that none of my organs were affected and uh, my heap was saved because it went through my heap and Alhamdulillah I'm walking today and that's why I'm at this walk because to show uh, that uh, what Ahlul Bayt and the gift of life that I've been given I make use of it in, in the love of uh, the Ahlul Bayt <laughs> The sheer amount of people walking is outstanding in itself, as every year the number of millions visiting Karbala increase. The event has set world records for the largest peaceful gathering in history several times. In recent years exceeding 20 million people. The number of people only highlights the extreme hospitality provided by the Iraqi people. Throughout the walk, there are tents set up by normal Iraqis, some of whom save up the entire year so that they may serve the pilgrims and visitors on this walk through any means necessary. Not only Iraqis, but people from all over the world venture to acquire a post on the walk in order to make the journey a comfortable one, all in the name of serving the Shia of Imam Hussein. One is exposed to all sorts of different cultures and foods along the way. Boys at the age of 10 to 15, rather than spending time on the streets, spend their time holding plates of food for passers-by. Those who give out food take this attitude of giving so seriously that they are hurt and offended when one doesn't take the food and would lay in the middle of the street calling out and even begging the visitors to take some of their food. Several massage posts are set up along the path to Karbala for those whose feet are aching. As the philanthropists see to it, that a visitor's foot is massaged thoroughly before setting up on the walk once more. The houses along the walk, known as Mawakib, are open to all strangers. Anyone is welcome. Throughout the day, visitors rest in them and at night they sleep in them. The hosts prepare hot meals of rice and meat for a nighttime meal before the visitors continue on their journey in the morning. Truly the words of Prophet Muhammad want for your brother what you want for yourself are echoed throughout this walk as Islam's true face is shown. All this is done by a people living in a country that is considered a war-torn one. To witness all this humanity during a walk that stretches out for days is another incentive in the pilgrim's contemplation of the world. During the walk, strangers become friends and stories are shared. One such story occurred decades ago during the time of Saddam. Some pilgrims and visitors would try to reach Karbala on Arba'in despite it being forbidden, as it was in history when those caught walking to Imam Hussein would have their bodies mutilated. Just like those people of history knew, they would have to literally sacrifice an arm or leg to come close to the Imam. So too did this specific visitor know his life was in danger. There was no set path from Najaf to Karbala as there is now, and so this man 
and a group of his friends set on their way to Karpala in the wilderness, traveling at night and resting in the day in order not to be seen. The group of visitors lost their route along the way and had to make a choice between two paths. One led to Karpala and the other led to a town that was home to the Bathist headquarters, which if they were to stumble into would surely face their imminent death. At that moment, a white bird, one rarely seen in those lands, flew down onto the ground. The travelers took heed of the bird and decided to take the path that the bird took. Indeed, it led them to salvation and took them to Imam Hussein's shrine in Karbala, saving their lives. Through the visitation of Imam Hussein, it taught them the secrets of true reliance on Allah. It is a walk where people tear away from the shackles of their egos and return back to their innate natures of purity. As the visitor gets closer to Karbala, his emotions boil with all the sensations of goodness that he has been exposed to during the walk, slowly increasing intensity before reaching his spiritual elevation at Imam Hussein's shrine and therefore changing his life. This is echoed by Imam Jafar Sadiq when he states, When the rays of the sun fall on the visitor of Imam Hussein's shrine, it consumes his sins like the fire consumes wooden sticks. The sun does not leave any sin on his body and he returns home sinless. In fact, on his return, he is granted a status that is not even given to those who shed their blood in Allah's path. This walk is then a symbol of revolution, both the outer and the inner. When a Shia knows Imam Hussein's right over the people and leaves his house for the Imam's visitation in this condition without any pride and conceit, then a thousand angels accompany him from the right with another 1,000 angels on the left and he will be rewarded as if he has performed 1,000 Hajj and 1,000 Umrah with a prophet or with the Vazi or successor of a prophet.